Welcome to INFS 325 Public Relations. Ladies and gentlemen, public relations is not an information studies subject or discipline. We are borrowing from another discipline because we think it is very relevant to our environment. So what we'll be doing in these sessions, we'll be looking at the concepts and theories in public relations, and then we apply them to our environment, that is the information environment. In session one, we will be introduced to public relations. We will look at the role of public relations in today's world. We will be able to define a few keywords in public relations. And then we will state the functions and characteristics of a PR officer. So your reading list, your first reading list is the Satel Fraser book, The Practice of Public Relations, published by Prentice Hall. So let's have an overview of public relations. What is public relations? Public relations involves the cultivation of favorable relations for organizations and products with key publics through use of a variety of communication channels and tools. Traditionally, PR professionals have worked with news media to build the favorable image by publicizing organization or its products through stories in print and public and broadcast media. But today, how will we consider public relations? The role of public relations is much broader today because it also includes building awareness and creating favorable image for the company or client, closely monitoring numerous media, media channel for public comments so that you as the organization will be able to make the necessary changes. Managing crisis is part of public relations and generally building goodwill among the organization's target markets, either through the community or through, um, with, through programs and events. So let's start with definitions of public relations. And under these definitions, I have a couple of them, but we will look at about two or three, and then we sum up, sum up these definitions. Public relations, according to Satel, the textbook that you're actually using, it's a planned process to influence public opinion through sound character and proper performance based on mutual, satisfactory, two-way communication. So kindly note a few terms which I'll highlight in Satel's definition. It's a planned process. You are influencing public opinion. And then it is based on satisfactory two-way communication. Let's look at the British Institute of Public Relations and see if we can have similar keywords being raised in there. So the Institute of Public Relations defines PR as the planned and sustained efforts to establish and maintain goodwill and mutual understanding between an organization and its publics. Again, the idea of planning comes in. And here we have an important keyword, establishing or maintaining goodwill and mutual understanding. The idea of publics comes in. So we are introduced to the idea of publics, that is the people that you want to communicate with. Let's look at the, um, the PR Society of America and let's look at their definition. Public relations helps an organization and its publics to mutually, to adapt mutually to each other. So if you just go over the work and look at the different definitions that I've given, these are the key words which arise, are, take, are, are taken from it. Management planning, there's planning, there's communication, and there's publics. So no matter which definition that you want to use, the PR professional needs to be able to plan 
to influence attitudes and actions through their communications. So as we looked at these three terms, planned or management process, communication or publics, we want to know how the PR officer, with these keywords in mind, be able to carry out PR activities. And so to communicate effectively with the publics, a number of professors or PR gurus have come up with certain processes which will enable you to carry out effective PR activity or PR campaign. The first professor is named John Maston, and he suggested a four-step model, acronym RACE. And what does RACE stand for? RACE stands for research, action, communication, and evaluation. Now, the key to the process is action. In any, key, any PR activity, you need to be able to research, you need to be able to take action, and then you finally need to communicate with your publics what you have done or what you intend to do. And then as the process goes on, you need to evaluate the whole activity. There is another professor who are, uh, called Sheila Crispasi who extended this race formula into the five part ROSI. And what does the ROSI stand for? Research. Again, research into the activity you're doing. Set your objectives. Give us your strategies that you'll be able, you're going to use. Implement them and then evaluate. There are other contributors to this PR campaign process or how you'll be able to affect the PR process. Um, look at this one. There is what we call RPIE. Again, research, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So in considering PR, there are a number of steps to take. Definitely, the research aspect is there, the planning, the communication, and if implementation or actions, and then evaluation. I, we mentioned publics as one of the key ways. And who is a public? A public arises when a group of people face a similar indeterminate situation. Are they organized to do something about a problem? Or you can talk to a, say that a public is a group of people with a stake in an issue, organization, or an idea. Identifying your public is very important. So what kind of publics do we have? Or how do we view publics? We do have internal or external publics. Assuming we are in, at the University of Ghana, which you are, you are a public to the university. You are an internal public to the university. Now, if we talk of the external publics, we will talk of those who supply things to the university. They can be considered external publics. Some people describe the publics as primary or secondary. So for you students, you are primary publics. Secondary publics will be, again, our suppliers, such as the banks or the utility companies. They are secondary publics. Some people also look at publics as traditional and future. The traditional publics or the future publics, those that you expect to woo into your system in future. So for instance, all the students from JHS, SSS, we'll call them our future publics. And then of course, some people view publics this way as proponents, opponents, and the uncommitted. And if we take this into politics, this is very clear. So we have the proponents of one um, political party, the opponents of another political party, and then those who sit on the fence. We are the uncommitted people. Now, the goal of effective public relations is actually to harmonize the internal and external relationships so that the organization can enjoy 
not only the goodwill of all its publics, but also gain stability and long life. Now, the next we're going to look at the functions and characteristics of public relations. And so after looking at the functions of public relations, you need to find out whether these will functions are also applicable in the information environment. Let's look at some functions. Writing. A public relations officer has to write. In our environment, we also need to write. We need to carry out media relations. That means relate to the press, to the journalists, and all those things, because we need to relate to them to be able to bring out exactly what we are doing in the information environment. The public relations officer has to plan, he has to counsel, he has to research, he has to be involved in publicity. And ladies and gentlemen, in our environment, we do all these things. And that is why the discipline or the subject of public relations is so related to what we do. Then market communications. Of course, we need to be involved in marketing of our information centers. We need to relate with our communities because libraries and archives and even museums operate within communities. Then we talk of consumer relations, and that is our publics. And then employee relations, our staff members that we work with. Then the government affairs. Of course, we need to deal with ministries the agencies and the departments because our libraries, our museums, and our archives work within a government department. Then, of course, investors. We need to be involved with investors or special public relations. So you can see that the public relations officer performs a number of functions, and these are very, very relevant to our environment as I speak to you. Let us look at how the public relations officer behaves when he's relating with the manager or management and then also relating with the publics. So to the manager, the public relations officer has to interpret the philosophies, the policies, the programs and practices to the publics. So the PR officer takes all the management's philosophies, their policies, their programs, and sends them to the publics, whilst the public also feeds the PR officer with their opinions, their needs, and their desires. So it is a two-way affair. When we have the PR officer interpreting management's goals and vision to us, they also carry to management what we think, what we need, or what we desire. So that kind of two-way affair makes the goodwill that is needed to be established between the organization and the publics. Let's now look at the characteristics of the PR officer. All right, so we will have a number of characteristics. You have to be knowledgeable in the field of PR. You have to be knowledge, uh, knowledgeable in communication. You have to be IT savvy, that is technological knowledge. And of course, you need to be very much aware of current affairs. You need to be aware of business knowledge as well as management knowledge. And then what about the attitudes of the PR officer? A pro communicator. The PR officer must possess the bias towards disclosing rather than withholding information. And so if you want to withhold uh, information, you cannot be a proper PR officer. A PR officer has to, be, to do a lot of advocacy. He needs to advocate for his employers. A PR officer has also to counsel. So you need to be able to advise senior management as to what to do um, actually in the best interest of the organization. 
And then you also need to be ethical. The PR officer has to, has, must always be very, very ethical. So when you talk of ethics, you talk of morality, what is right, what is wrong. So if you are not able to uphold the ethics of the profession, this particular job is not for you. And then the PR officer must be willing to take risk. And uh, this is very difficult. People say, why should I take risk when there are no job opportunities or job openings? But you need to take risk because you need to be truthful to the organization. You need to be truthful to the pu uh, publics. You also need to have a positive outlook. So the PR officer must keep on swinging and smiling, even in the face of frustrating nature of the work. So these are the characteristics of the PR officer. Don't forget them. Assess those characteristics and see whether you'll be able to meet them because these are the same characteristics that we need in the information environment. Now, for your assignment, you will need to be able to discuss in your own words the characteristics and functions of the public relations officer. So in this session, we've just had an overview of what PR is. We've looked at the definitions of PR, looked at the key words. We've also looked at the characteristics and functions of the PR officer. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you.